when you think of the cozy isle of Windfall, you cannot help but remember its vivacious residents. From the quaint classroom of Miss Marie and the Killer Bees, to the nightly auctions at the House of Wealth, it's fair to say that many see this island as a home base during Link's seafaring adventure in The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. However, nestled within the winding path to the center of the island, there resides a most curious citizen who quite literally stands <laughs> above the rest. In today's video, we will uncover the hidden secrets to this character's mysterious past and find out if this fellow might actually have some relation to Link's own family. I hope you enjoy this old theory, and let us know if you think it's true or not. I'm Caleb of Rated N, and this is Linzo's Legacy. Lenzo the Pictographer is a longtime resident of Windfall Island. As his title suggests, he is a connoisseur of all things pictography, so much so, in fact, that he is quite famous for his accomplishments in his field of expertise. Lenzo has developed a guarded personality over the years, due to his benevolence being rewarded with misfortune. Nevertheless, he is one of the most well-meaning people Link will meet on his quest. He also has a bit of a habit of sneaking up on people who aren't paying attention. Perhaps this is a skill that served him well as a pictographer. Because of his guarded nature, the other townsfolk have perceived him as a mysterious fellow. The gossip mongers frequently trade rumors about his love life. The ladies in town regard him as handsome and dreamy. Due to his age, Linzo has retired from adventuring across the Great Sea and has opened a pictograph studio on Windfall Island. Taking a look around his shop reveals that he spends time on repairs, lens maintenance, and expanding his collection of pictograph boxes. During the course of the game, Linzo will recruit Link as his pictograph assistant. The tasks that he delegates to our hero are charmingly good-natured and helpful to the other citizens of Windfall. For example, the goal of his first task is to have Link snap a picture of a person who continuously writes love letters to no avail. Linzo's goal is to confront the one writing these letters and to let them know that their advances are unwanted and to learn to let go and move on. The picture will give Linzo the proof that he needs. On the next quest, his desire is to light a fire under a cowardly resident of the island. He tasks Link with sneaking up on the fellow and frightening him, capturing the moment of terror with the pictograph box. This picture will give Linzo the proof he needs to confront the timid man about his behavior and allow him to lend him some backbone. His final task is that he intends to bring together two young people who have been too timid to speak to each other, despite their attraction for one another being obvious to everyone around them. Claiming that his intervention is for the sake of the town and his own desire to help, he instructs Link to capture the moment that these two hesitant lovebirds' eyes meet. He even goes as far as to call himself Cupid, the Archer of Love. Considering this, I believe we can firmly establish that Linzo is a person with a heart for good. He is the kind of person who places themselves into others' lives with the intention of doing what he believes is best. However, this outgoing kindness doesn't always have the outcomes that he expects. When we first meet Linzo, he will explain his guarded personality by telling a personal story. One night some time ago, he met a traveler. This vagabond had nowhere to stay, so Linzo decided to rent out a room to him. When dawn finally came, he was shocked to discover that his finest pictobox had been stolen. He laments on the fact that his goodwill was repaid with cruelty, and that despite his attempts to spread kindness, 
his box does not return to him. Because of this event, he cannot trust people so readily. It is here where I'd like to transition to a small theory for your consideration. The one who stole Linzo's pictograph box so long ago might have been a young Tingle. Huh? I'll briefly explain this old theory. When Link arrives on Windfall Island, Tingle can be found locked up in the island's jail cell. According to people around the island, the thief who stole the pictograph box was jailed in that cell for a long time. Eventually, the thief managed to escape the cell, but the box was never found. When exploring the back of the cell at Tingle's recommendation, Link will find a small nook where the box had been hidden, along with some hand-etched stones giving a little more to the story. The thief explains how he was caught and imprisoned, and how he hid the box from his captors. He then managed to create the tunnels that lead out of the jail. His plan was to return one day to reclaim the stolen box, but Link manages to claim it instead. When Link shows this box to Linzo, he remarks about how he once had a Pictobox of similar quality, perhaps because it is the very same box. Tingle, surprisingly enough, happened to know about the item that lay at the back of the cell. This fact makes him quite likely to be the culprit. However, why didn't he simply retrieve the Pictobox for himself like the stone's author said he would? One possibility is that since the theft took place so long ago, Tingle would have been much younger and smaller. This would allow him to navigate the tunnels like Link had done. As an older and fatter adult, Tingle may not have been able to reach the back of the cell. Do you believe that the thief was Tingle, or just some other random person? Leave a comment for us and like the video if you are enjoying it so far. Now, let's get back to Linzo and take a look at his past exploits that build the foundation of this video's main theory. When we venture to the upper level of his studio, Linzo will regale us with stories of his exploits. In his youth, Linzo was a man who sailed the Great Sea in order to take pictographs of all of its wonders. His explorer's nature makes him something of a kindred spirit to Link, who is also a seasoned adventurer. As we look at the pictures hanging on the wall, Linzo will tell us the stories of his visits to each location. He has been to an island of Choo Choo's. He's seen the Triangle Isles goddess statues. He's been to the private cabana. He's even ventured close to the Forsaken Fortress. He's also been shipwrecked and come face to face with the monstrous ghost ship. Suffice it to say that he has been on the most daunting of adventures for him to have photos of the ghost ship or the Forsaken Fortress. However, it is the last picture that is the most intriguing. It is none other than Outset Island, Link's own home. When questioned about the picture of Outset Island, Linzo will recall a warm memory. He goes on to mention, Isn't it a finely snapped shot? I took it in my younger days. It is the most delightful of fishing villages, innocent and rich with nature's bounty. It was there I met a beautiful young lass. Although, I suppose she is probably not as young as she used to be these days. Linzo goes out of his way to remark about a beautiful young woman that he met during his visit. He then points out that she would have grown old by now. The fact that he makes mention of this beautiful woman is likely an indication that she wasn't just some mere stranger that he caught glimpse of, but instead was a highlight of his time on Outset Island. You are probably already putting together who he might be referencing with these words. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's take a look at Outset Island and see if there's anything of note. Outset Island is near the border of the map of the Great Sea. The mid-December climate on the island is comfortable and the Isle's citizens go about their quaint lives without worry. However, this island does receive visitors from time to time, 
such as Jaboon when he escapes from Great Fischal's destruction, or the mysterious old man Ho-Ho viewing secrets through his kaleidoscope, or even the Rito Postman making his rounds. One particular house has more pictographs in it than any other on the island by far. Link's grandma's house contains many photos of her and her grandchildren. Assuming that Linzo, who is the most likely person to travel the Great Sea with the pictograph box, came to Outset Island and took these photos, it could potentially indicate that Linzo has a personal reason for revisiting the island. I would like to submit the idea that the reason for his multiple visits to Outset Island could be that Linzo is seeking out that beautiful woman from his past. Since there is only one woman on the island that fits this age requirement, who has evidence of Linzo's presence, and also has no partner filling a romantic role in her life, I believe it could be that Link's own grandma may have been the beauty of Outset Island that Linzo once spoke about. In this theory, Link's grandma would have been a young woman living in this fishing village. One day, a youthful sailor would visit Outset Island and meet this young lady, instantly falling in love with her. Being a man of the sea, it wouldn't be long before Linzo would have to depart again. Nevertheless, he would purpose in his heart to return and visit his old flame from time to time. As the years went by, he would focus fully on his passion for pictography, and upon subsequent visits to Outset Island, he would share that passion with the ones he cared about. However, I must point out that this theory raises some important questions that warrant an explanation. First, is it possible that since Linzo had a relationship with Link's grandma, could it be that Linzo is Link's grandfather? Linzo does seem to have a good heart and a sense for adventure, so he and Link both share that in common. On the other hand, Linzo is a giant of a man, while Link appears to be of shorter stature. These are not super definitive evidences, but they are worth examining in regards to this theory. Secondly, where is the evidence of Link's parents? If Linzo truly was related to Link and Errol, it would make sense that there would be at least one pictograph of his parents somewhere. After all, even Tetra has a painting of her mother in the cabin of her pirate ship. It does seem odd that Link's parents go completely unmentioned despite his grandma being present. With a professional pictographer in the family, it would be odd that not a single picture of them exists. Furthermore, why wouldn't Linzo have just lived on Outset Island with his lover once he retired from his travels as a sailor? While it does make sense that a pictograph studio would fare much better on Windfall Island than Outset, one would think that a man of his character would want to either be with his loved one or relocate them to Windfall in order to have them close by. There is one final point to mention that does appear to make this theory more improbable. When Link first meets Linzo, one of the first things Linzo says is that he doesn't recognize who Link is. He states, I would have to say that I've never seen your face before, have I? This line conflicts with the theory, since if we were to examine the photos inside of Link's home, we can see that there are a few of them with Link in the shot. If Linzo was the one who took these photos, how could it be true that he has not seen Link's face before? What do you believe the truth to be? Is Linzo a secret relative of the Hero of Winds, or has the gossip around the Great Sea gotten too out of hand? Are you able to think of any more points that either reinforce this theory or debunk it? Leave your explanations in the comments section, as we look forward to reading your responses. If you have any suggestions for future content that you'd like to get a rated N take on, let us know. Thank you very much for liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Check out one of our other Zelda theory videos as well. Thanks for watching the video, we'll see you all in the next one, and as always, keep it rated N.